So in this video I'm going to be taking this pipe, putting it in the ground with this tractor and this machine that I built. Alright, so there's the the piece bolted on, then a piece is going to come down here, and I'm going to have two pieces on angles that are, two pieces on angles that are cutting. So I've got them jigged up in the vise, going to cut them off and then we'll see what we got. Alrighty then, so the camera died, um, anyway, so this is what I got done yesterday. So. Uh, these pieces are cut and I've got them tack welded on there um, with a couple gussets. Now, I'm not thinking, I don't think that this will work as it is right now. So what I'm going to do is get some, some 10 gauge and make, so it'll uh, try to pull the dirt up out of the hole that it's making. Um, but here's some of the pipe that I'm going to be using. It's 4 inch, uh, 4 and a half inch outside diameter, 4 inch inside. So if that makes a six inch trench, then that should go in there nicely. Now, this isn't gonna be completely perfect because it just won't be, but if this does, you know, maybe, you know, 50 or 60 or even 70% of the work for me, then, you know, it beats digging it by hand because I've got about 100 and maybe 100 feet to 150 feet of this that I gotta do. So, so we'll see if it works. And what I also just got is, so I just got some of these. These are from a John Deere disc. Um, so the idea with this, this will go in uh, before I do that, and I'll just cut the sod. Uh, so I'll spread them about a foot apart. Got some pipe here. That'll ride. Hold these in. Then I'll just make another bracket and attach this to the same rig. And, uh, have to put probably a bunch of weight on it so they cut down. But yeah. So I think I'll finish off. Uh, with the 10 gauge, you've got to make some templates and make some little shapes and then we'll build another bracket to hold these and then we should be able to fully weld uh, that and then maybe test it. So here's the two pieces and I think they're going to work pretty good. I just cut a little bit off the bottom because they're a little tall. So that's that side and this one is this side. There, and that'll go like that so the earth will get pushed up to there and then try to force out of the hole. Cool. Now I just gotta fill in the space there somehow. So I think I'll, what I'll do is I'll tack this on to where I want it. I've got my square to make sure it's not too far out so that it just stays in the same track width as the six inch, um, even at the top, so that we get a pretty straight hole that it's not, you know, bigger on the top or smaller on the bottom. Um, so yeah, we'll do that. Alright, so so these are tacked on and I've got this piece. So that's just a small piece of 10 gauge and I've bent the corner there. Uh, these are just offcuts that I have kicking around. So I just need to bend the corner a bit and then I'll probably put another small one in right there, do the same thing, just bend the corner, make it shorter obviously, and then and that should be enough, enough height. And then, and that'll look something like that. All right, so I'm welding this up here with the old stick welder. And, you know, that's a pretty big gap to fill there, so. Well, anyway, I got, this pretty much done there. A couple nice speeds, but then the breaker sometimes blows and then I have to restart and then it's hard to restart with this. Anyway. I'm gonna have to grab a piece to put in there as filler because I can only run this at about uh, 115 amps. That's the lowest that it'll want to go. So got a fine piece to stick in there. Other than that, should be should be good. All right, now for the 10 gauge stuff, I'm just using flux core. 
not bad. It, it helps when there's a little bit of a gap in the plate. Um, then it burns through and gets gets really good on the plate. But these are pretty good there. The, that, that one's pretty good there. That one's all right. Decent. I think that's the longest bead I've ever done with this machine. It really likes 10 gauge though. Yeah, but that's that's pretty good. All right, so this thing's pretty much fully welded. If I think I need to, I can put in another brace in the back. But as of right now, I'm going to grind it all down and then polish it up nice so that the dirt can slide off there, maybe fill in that hole there, and then away we go. All right, so I've got most of the welds grinded off this side. Um, so I just hit it with the, uh, the stone, the grinding stone, and then going to do the flap disc afterwards and get it all nice and polished so that the dirt just slides right off, hopefully. This I might do another bead on top and then make it more of a point, or I might just leave it, I don't know. But I've just got to grind this side, so a lot of grinding. Well, 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 yes, chapter three. So pretty much I had to start over because I tried it here. You can see this little ditch here and it didn't go deep enough. It maybe went, you know, six inches. Uh, so I needed more height. So I had to add a little bit. So I cut it down and then added about 10 inches in. It didn't end up going 10 inches deep, but it went about nine inches. So pretty good. And we have a flat tire, so we're fixing that at the same time. All right, so this is done. Just got to get the right size bolt in that. That's what it should be, like, like that. Um, but yeah, then we'll test that out, see how it works, and then I have to build a uh, sod cutter to cut the sod in front of it. Um, here's this wheel. I got a couple of runs. I painted it with brush paint because it didn't have enough, uh, or my spray cans, all the... All my trim clad nozzles are clogged up, so I can't spray the white it's over there, but you know. Um, this I probably won't paint for a while, in case I need to modify it. So, yeah. so here's the tire in that. Um, but I bought this about a year ago. This is a 24-inch uh, uh, flat pry bar. Um, tire lever, basically, and it works really good. You do scratch the rim a little bit just around the edge, but if you care what you can put tape on it. But this, this will actually do car tires. I've actually done um, four, four car tires with this. Changed them manually. It wasn't too fun, but I mean, it worked. But easy. You just put it in and then pry it. And then I still used a screwdriver just to hold the place so that the tire doesn't slip back in on the rim. But it makes it way easier than just using like 12 inch screwdrivers because you have double the leverage and it's actually meant for this. But yeah, I'd recommend getting one of these. I did. I took this tire off in like five minutes, not even. So anyway, here's the patch. Should hold. There's just a thorn in the tire. So, all right, so this is where this is. I've got the tire back on the bead. It took me like five minutes to remount it. Uh, I'm telling you, those tire lovers are really good. Um, but anyway, got to put air in it and then bolt it on. This is right here. I think it's good. Um, now for the sod cutters that are going to go uh, before it, I think I'm just going to mount these onto the same plate here, but mount them on the side. So that these tubes that go over them like this, uh, I'm going to have to drill a hole through it and through it to keep a bolt in it so when I lift it out of the ground they don't fall out. See this is what they had originally pretty much somewhere there's bolts or it was welded one or the other um, but yeah right there there's a hole for a bolt so I'll just drill through this and this and then um, then we'll be good then I'll just weld this 
say on the back side of this right here at the correct height and then so I'll just remove this then I want to cut a new plate for this and get the holes so that's what I'll do all right and we're back so I'll just put this on and then away we go I need to jack it up first anyway so I cut this tube to four inches and I'm gonna weld it on here because uh, that's how tall that piece is there and then um, It'll go on to here and then a hole will be in the top so that it can't come out. And then this distance should be plenty wide enough for our hole. Alright, so they're welded on there. Just gotta clean up a bit better. I might go over that one. Yeah, I'll go over that one again, but yeah, then clean up and then take this off and then mock up these. And then I my intentions with this is that um, it cuts into the sod about this much, so about four inches. Then you can pull the sod out, and then um, then we just put the sod back in when we're done. But yeah, I think I'm gonna drill a hole right here, and right there, so that these don't fall out. All right, so I got the holes drilled for this. Um, I think these are going to be fine. They might move around a bit. Um, if that becomes a problem, I'm going to test it, then I'll just uh, weld the nut right there so that it can't pivot. Uh, same with on the other side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean this up with a flap disc just so that they cut into the ground nice. And then we'll try it out. I'll probably have to put a bunch of weight on the back so that it can really dig in. Alright, so these are kind of cleaned up now and bolts are welded on there uh, so the bolts don't come out the nuts have been welded on that should be fine uh, now you know let's test it so i'll got to put some gas in it but then then i'll find some weights to put on here i should make a bracket so i can put the suitcase weights like this all right, so well, we'll see how it goes. This tire is a little low; it needs a little air. But anyway, whenever I made this weight bracket, I never put in um, a bar, a crossbar in it, kind of. But so I did that, so it adds a lot of strength, so it's not twisting it as much. So you got two. What are these? Twenty-five pounds or forty pounds on the front? 40 pounds, this is right there. Two, so 80 pounds on the front, and then this is an 80 pound weight on the back here. enough just you have to have a lot more weight on it see that's almost not deep enough but if I get it going I don't know it might need some more weight but that's more weight than I can put on this and actually lift and drive around so I guess it worked. I mean, it does cut in. Is that going to be enough to remove the sod? Maybe. 
I mean, maybe. Oh boy, that was getting tippy. I mean, it does work, but it just needs a lot of weight. Oh, we stopped. So short update, just switched over and so I got this done, I cut it and then went with a shovel and made little bales the whole way and so it goes down there. Now we're gonna try this out, it should work. Alright, so I just did two passes, on the first pass actually the thing broke because the top, the angle iron was only welded in like three places when I first built it for a grader so now so this thing um, it broke right here actually uh, you can see right here there's a weld and right here there's a weld so there's four only four say one and a half inch welds holding this angle iron on it used to be on the top of the plate so I took it off put it on the bottom and it's pretty much fully welded uh, all the way around except for a couple stitch welds uh, on the bottom plate um, but fully welded I used stick the stick welder uh, some 7018. So I used the stick welder and burned some rods into that. Got some gusset pieces here uh, just to s strengthen the web of the angle iron. But yeah, so that will never break now. At least it shouldn't because um, it was the tractor was popping wheelies when it hit the, rut, the, the roots and tried to pull through them. And anyway, but so now with it being on the bottom, when I put my blade back on, the greater blade, I'm going to build. Uh, more like a greater blade, less of just a bar. So it'll be actually have some bladage to it and some curve. And so it'll be able to turn 180 degrees now. Um, and so I can use it pushing backwards if I wanted to, uh, like a regular, you know, something that you buy rather than build in your backyard, which is where I currently am. I rewelded it a lot, so it didn't break on the second pass. So I got it here, right here, you can just see all the roots from this tree just horrible so I've been trying to cut them with the shovel um, but yeah so there's the pipe in the ground it's pretty much uh, sl level sloping down that way I used a four foot level and then water comes out at the end you can see there's water in it because we hit water after we went through the clay here's it at the end you can see the water flowing out of it so that should be fine. Now I'll hook up to the plow and try to push the rest of this dirt into the hole and then cover it over with grass if we get to that. But you can see it's a lot uh, deeper here because this is a higher part than where the trees are. Anyway. All right, so we ended up using the machine to dig the whole thing to about eight inches, except for where there are roots. We had to dig by hand uh, by this tree. But we dug the whole thing to eight inches. It's about eight inches here, and then it digs a little bit deeper and deeper over to the edge. We just put the pipe in, and we hit water after we hit clay. So this is working pretty good, but I put the sod in piles like there, so I can't get right there. But that should be fine. Need to leave a bit of room for the sod to go back on top. Anyway. Pushing the dirt in. So now it's after, obviously, but this is the pipe here. It stops here because I didn't want to move the fence, but there's a low spot behind that fence, and the entire yard is a low spot, but you can see where it goes and then over to the ditch. But that's pretty much the path that it goes. Um, judging on in the spring. I don't know if I have a picture or a video of how it is in the spring, but it kind of floods because the tree line is higher. I don't know how you'd be able to see that, but it's just barely higher, so it kind of puddles in this area. Um, so yeah, that's where it went. Um, but anyway, yeah, so eventually I'll finish this. We end up getting 200 feet of this uh, pipe with the sock. It's four inch pipe with the sock. Um, but yeah, so the machine worked uh, to conclude. 
it worked pretty good. Um, I could have made it better, obviously, but did pretty well. Got most of the work done. Well, more fun videos to come. I'm sure the snow will bring some funness, but here's what's going on with this, if you can see in there. Not a lot of much going on in there. Anyway, stick around, people. We'll see you in the next one.